Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. Parents were divided when the reporter Mark Tai of the Sunday Independent shared this child's mathematical homework. The question is, how many corners does a semicircle have? The child has put the answer of two and it is marked incorrect. And the correct answer is said to be zero. So people were wondering, what is the correct answer? Is it zero or is it two? Now, I will suggest that both of these answers have justification. You could also say the answer is infinite, and I'm going to explain why three could be a valid answer too. So how is that possible? Let's get to that in a minute. So I posted this question on YouTube in the community tab, and I found these results in the poll. Over 31,000 of you submitted votes on Thanksgiving Day. I'm so happy that people were thinking about mathematics on Thanksgiving. Help me settle an argument. How many corners does a semicircle have? 9% replied zero. An overwhelming 75% of the votes were for two. 1% of people said three. 10% said infinite. And 5% said all of the above can be correct count me in that category. Now, some people may nitpick and say, well, this is not a properly defined question, so there is no answer. So what's the point of even thinking about this question? I will recall a quote by the statistician George E.P. Box. All models are wrong, but some are useful. This refers to the fact that that basically anything we do in statistics or science is just an idealized version of reality. The model of geometry on a flat plane is what we do most of our calculations, but we know this is wrong because space-time is curved. We do calculations with the ideal gas law, but these are idealized conditions which are not met in reality. The models are wrong, but they can still be useful. Just think about a weather report and how we talk about temperature. Now, temperature is a reflection of the average kinetic energy. So you can either have more kinetic energy or less kinetic energy. There is no such thing as cold. It is actually heat that is leaving your body. However, a weather forecaster might say that tomorrow will be cold or a cold front is coming in or don't let the cold air inside the home. This is a wrong model, but it can still be useful. So in this question, how exactly do we get to a corner of a semicircle? We first start out with the definition of a circle. A circle is the locus of points that are some fixed distance from the center point. It is just this boundary, which is the circle. If you wanted to have all points in between, this would be more accurately called a disk. So a semicircle would be half of a circle, so it would just be this half arc. If you wanted to enclose this area by connecting the diameter, this would be more accurately called a half disk. So we now state the question, how many corners are there in a half disk? But what is a corner? Here's the definition from Wikipedia for vertex in geometry. In geometry, a vertex, plural, vertices, or vertexes, is a point where two or more curves, lines, or edges meet or intersect. As a consequence of this definition, the point where two lines meet to form an angle and the corners of polygons and polyhedra are vertices. So where does this definition bring us? In the half disk, we have a straight edge and we have a curved edge. If you take a corner to be only where two straight edges meet, it is right to say there are zero corners to a half disk. This is a justifiable model. But you could also say a corner is where two edges of any kind meet, whether it's a straight edge or a curved edge. And in this case, it would obviously be two corners. This is a justifiable answer. In fact, for all practical purposes, this is probably a really good answer. 
Imagine you have a coffee table that's in the shape of a half moon or a half circle. You might be worried that someone might run into these sharp corners. There are two sharp corners to this table. So you could say there are corners to this shape. Now let's take a look at another interpretation. Let's start out with the triangle where the base is a diameter and one point is going to approximate this circular arc. This shape obviously has three corners. We can increase this to a quadrilateral, which definitely has four corners. Then we can increase this to a pentagon. Then we can increase it to a hexagon. We can increase it to a heptagon and an octagon, a nonagon and a decagon. By this point, we have 10 sides and 10 corners, and we're getting a lot closer to the shape of a semicircle. Let's imagine increasing the number of corners, and we continue going up. Once we get to about 100 corners, the shape is visually indistinguishable from the half disk that we want to represent. So you could say that the semicircle will be a shape that's represented as the number of corners goes to infinity. The semicircle itself doesn't have an infinite number of corners. However, this will become a useful model for us to understand how many corners there are in the semicircle. So we've gone over the obvious answers of 0, 2, and infinity. Where does the answer of 3 come from? This comes from the world of graphic design. Here's a help page from Adobe Illustrator. The first thing is what is a path? A path contains one or more straight or curved line segments that you draw on a canvas using the pen, pencil, or curvature tool. You can have different types of paths, a straight open path, a curved open path, a straight closed path, or a curved closed path. And you'll see the final shape is exactly that of the half disk or the semicircle that we're trying to analyze. Now, what are anchor points? Anchor points are points that control the shape and direction of the path. The anchor points on the endpoints of a path are called control handles or corner points. Corner points can be straight or curved points depending on the shape they join. So if you look at this half disk, there are exactly three corner points. It's the two points on the end and this one point that's in the center. So it does make sense to speak of the three corner points of this semicircle. And that's why three is a completely valid answer if you're dealing with the world of graphic design. So I hope this gives a perspective on why zero, two, infinity, and three could be justifiable answers to this question. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.